a moment ago, we saw President Cyril Ramaphosa, his first public statements saying that F.W. de Klerk, the last apartheid president, will be remembered for ushering in peace, for ending apartheid, for in starting the process of negotiations, but also be remembered for the role that the apartheid regime and the havoc wrought on millions, on the lives of millions of South Africans. Well, Monley McCunney is the editor of City Press, someone who has been following our politics, would have been, well, probably before the transition. Monley, good, good afternoon to you. I really do appreciate the time. I suppose for many people, um, they will remember F.W. de Klerk for that moment, the 2nd of February, 1990, when he made an announcement that no one would expect, that no one had expected. It was with some shock that people received the news he was actually going to release Nelson Mandela. Yes, everybody was stunned by that announcement on the 2nd of February, 1990. And, you know, um, it would be miserly not to acknowledge and credit the clerk for actually opening that path, that opening the passage to, to a peaceful transition. Um, had he, of course, we need to ask ourselves, had he not been in charge at that point, had, had Peter W. Borda not had the stroke that he had in 89, had somebody else won the, uh, the race for the leadership of the National Party in 1989 and become president, would that person have actually had the courage that F.W. declared had to actually take that part? Of course, we know that he was under immense pressure, he was under immense domestic pressure, the, the internal revolution was was growing and growing and the defiance was massive and there was international pressure and the economy was in, was in tatters and the apartheid was unsustainable at that point. But it, it's possible that another leader could have said, I don't care, let's see how far we can take this. So that moment on February 2, 1990, even the ANC in Lusaka was taken by massive surprise. They actually did not anticipate that all the efforts would actually bear fruit on that particular day. And they actually had to scramble about how to respond to the clerk, to announcement. So I mean, like, and I, think, so I think that part of the legacy has got to be acknowledged, but it should not overwhelm the other side of his legacy, which is an evil legacy. I'm going to come to more on that in a moment because we, we, we are aware of decisions he made that led to the deaths of people. I do want to focus on that. I do want to talk a little bit more just quickly about the 1990s, if I may, Mondley, because he was also under pressure from his own people. I mean, many of his own people said that he was a sellout to the point where in the end he had to have, you know, it was the last sort of, I hate this phrase, but the last whites-only referendum in, the, in, in South African history in 1992 because that's how much pressure he was under. Yes, I mean, again, I think that's where the... The, the comes in because he, the decision he took in 1990 was flew totally against what the majority of the inner core of the National Party wanted the, and the membership of the National, National Party wanted and in fact at a huge portion of the white South African population. So there was a lot of outrage among white South Africans who actually did feel that they were being sold out and because the National Party had so demonized the ANC had so demonized the idea of majority rule that it was then seen that the clerk was opening the way for, for black rule to happen in South Africa, and that was absolute anathema. But I mean, like as we know, um, then at, at that point, he actually needed a mandate, um, and that mandate he was going to get from, he went out, of, uh, out there and he gave white South Africans a choice. Are you going to face Armageddon? Or are you going to choose a path that allows us to walk together with the rest of the population towards a, a united South Africa? I don't think he fully anticipated how fast things would happen. I think he thought he would have control over um, the transition because the things he, he, he himself put in place, I mean, like through the, during the negotiations, the, the outcome that the National Party wanted was not the outcome that eventually happened in 1993 when the interim constitution was signed. So, but then, you know, the forces of history just overwhelmed him. Um, uh, just like uh, Gorbachev in the Soviet Union, he thought he could also control the, the pace of the transition to an, a more open society, but that could not happen. So de Klerk himself was not in charge of that particular process at that particular point. 
One of the problems for de Klerk when we look at him and his legacy, and you've already alluded to it, is that he never took accountability. I mean, from what I understand of the history, he did make decisions that led to people being killed, executed is a better word, anti-apartheid activists. Um, he never took accountability for that. Uh, publicly, he refused to say that apartheid was a crime against humanity, and even quite recently, you know, two, three years ago, he would, he would refuse to accept that it was a crime against humanity. I mean, he's going to be remembered for that too. Yes, and, uh, and unfortunately, when somebody passes away, we only just want to remember the good and praise him, and so on. but we actually do not want to also highlight the terrible things that he Took, uh, that he partook in. De Klerk grew up in the National Party. De Klerk embraced, embraced apartheid, embraced racism, and so went up the ranks of the National Party, got to the highest ranks of the party, and implementing apartheid policies. And, and the worst, the most egregious, was the fact that he also sat on the State Security Council, which P.W. Porter's government set up in, the, in, the, in 1980 because they could see that um, that resistance was growing. And the State Security Council had discussed, debated, and sanctioned, and implemented uh, torture, killings. The State Security Council, Council was involved in the, in the internal violence in South Africa, supporting parties such as the IFP in carrying out massacres and in setting up the Third Force. The, there was the State, the State Security Council got IFP uh, members trained in Caprivi to come back and massacre people inside the country. And the State Security Council was largely responsible for the, for the mayhem in Mozambique by supporting Renamo. It sanctioned assassinations, it sanctioned torture, and de Klerk sat there and he went along with that. So by the time the, he became president in 1990, his hands were obviously dripping with blood. I'm sure that's going to be said a lot over the next couple of days and weeks. And so, and unfortunately, having taken the path that he, he took in 1990, he, he failed to acknowledge his own role in the evils of the, the, the apartheid era. And when he went to the Truth Commission as, far as the leader of a National Party delegation, he flatly refused to acknowledge that the National Party had sanctioned those extrajudicial killings and the sowing of mayhem and, the, and, and doing things that actually led to the deaths of tens of thousands of people. And I think for me, that stains him more than anything else. The fact that he just given the chance to say, I am sorry for what I did, for what I and my colleagues did and what my party did. He chose to deny, and that is something that he continued to deny to, to the end. And that that uh, statement that he made a few years ago that you, you mentioned just now, where he said that apartheid was not a crime against humanity, and he made it of his own volition. Yes, it wasn't an interview, but he made that statement, and he had to be compelled by public pressure to actually acknowledge that he actually had done wrong. So in his own heart, even in the end, he did not quite fully understand the terror and suffering that the apartheid system had brought upon the people, and also what the repression that was needed to uphold the apartheid system, what it caused ordinary South Africans. Wanli Makanya, thank you very much indeed. The editor-in-chief at the City Press newspaper, just part of the reaction for you today on the passing, the death of F.W. de Klerk. Let's go